All right, so this morning I just woke up to a whole new PlayStation showcase at the Paris Games Week, and all I can really say is PlayStation lied to us. This whole week they've been announcing, oh yeah, we're going to be giving you guys, we're going to be talking about like, you know, 20 games we've talked about before and seven new announcements. So all of that was a flat out lie because they gave us way more than that. I, I, I'm pretty sure either these are games are probably, you know, they were already announced and I didn't really know about, but the fact is I did not know at least a good portion of these games, way more than seven, and I'm, it doesn't seem like they only announced seven brand new games. It definitely seems like they had way more games in the lineup, but they also talked about way more other games. So in the end, I feel like they lied to us because they said they're going to be talking about like what 21 games in general, not just new ones. They talked about at least 40, because holy crap. Regardless, let's get down to it. It's going to be a recap of my honest thoughts of all the games and all stuff they you know, announced. So let's just get to it. Uh, I just want to start off like the you know the simple extra stuff and like the stuff that's already been you know announced you know just updates. First things first. This hasn't really been announced. But this is kind of new, but still it's like a remaster, so nothing new here. But Loco Roco Remastered is the first part one is already on the PlayStation Network, and part two is gonna be coming out December 9th. That sounds great. Not really a huge fan of the Loco Roco games, but there is a huge love for that series, so that's awesome to hear. Sims 4 is coming out in November. I uh, don't really care. Uh, no, no, like, don't get me wrong, Sims Sims is a great series, I used to like it when I was a kid, but over time, it just, you know, my interest kind of waned on it. Tetris World Tour, um, fi okay, finally, a, uh, you know, did I say Tetris? Sorry, Tennis World Tour. We're finally getting a tennis game on the PlayStation, and that's freaking awesome. Next up, Moss Lands? Oh yeah, Moss Lands is the, the cutesy, like, adventure game where you're the rat. I say cutesy because it's a really great art style, but it's actually kind of dark, and I really like, like the look of it. Uh, next up, Star Child. Don't really know much about it. It's in VR too, but it's interesting, but maybe not my cup of tea. Uh, next up, Resident Evil 7, Not a Hero uh, DLC trailer. This has already been, you know, pretty much shown to all the ambassadors out there, you know, Resident Evil ambassadors. But it's still cool to see that, you know, this, this game's still getting a lot of love. And the fact is that this brand new DLC is completely free. Not the stuff in the season pass, but the Chris Redfield stuff looks just great. And everything about it, like there's like new enemies, there's new, you know, gameplay mechanics. It just looks freaking great. Also, it's going to be all in VR, so hell yeah. Uh, next up, this is mostly VR games I'm talking about. I'm going to keep going, but Dead Hungry, it's like uh, you're cooking up. It's kind of like, what the hell is that game? Job Simulator, but you're like cooking up, you're a fry cook for zombies. It looks interesting. Again, not my cup of tea, and it does kind of look kind of dumb, but... As long as it's a cheap, you know, like like shovelware kind of game, it literally looks that's what it looks like. It looks like a lot of fun. But regardless, not really my company. Monster of the Deep, which is obviously the game that um, you know, the Final Fantasy fishing game. I'm interested, I want to play it, but it, it it's pretty pricey. I'm hoping that I might get it eventually. If not, get it immediately. because if I get it immediately, I'm obviously gonna review it. But that, that price point is just a little too high for me. Next up, episode Ignis. Here's a huge reveal, it's in VR. So we're actually getting something from the main game to be in VR, that's freaking amazing from the startup. Second off, the release date is now uh, December 13th, so we finally get a release date, that's great. But probably the best part is that we're getting a guest composer, just like episode uh, Prompto, but this time it's gonna be a legendary composer. And his name is Yasunori Mitsuda. You recognize that name, that means you played Chrono Trigger. Because holy shit, the composer for Chrono Trigger, that is just awesome. Just from the set, just watch the trailer. Like, listen to the music, it sounds incredible. Um, next up, Invector VR. Uh, this is a VR rhythm game. Kind of over those, but it's good to see that, you know, we're getting, like, games like Thumper and stuff like that. It, this looks really cool. Rec Room, a VR shooter. We didn't really get that much footage of this, but I don't, I don't even know about this game. I don't know if it's brand new or whatever the hell, but it looks interesting. Again, I have other shooters to, you know, to clean my, to uh, fill my palette. But for now, I don't know. Let's say clean my palette. Doesn't make sense. Uh, next up, Smash Hit Plunder. Oh, it was like a beat 'em up game. I'm trying to remember these from like off the top of my head and see if they like, you know, this one really didn't like, I guess, wow me too much. It only showed like what 15 seconds of footage or like 10 seconds of footage, but it looked cool. Again, not something I'm. I, I just want to see more. I guess that that's not really, you know, I can't really judge it yet because it only really gives like a little snippet of it. More footage of Far Cry 5. Now I'm excited to see this because whereas Far Cry 3 was amazing, Far Cry 4 was kind of a letdown in the sense because it was more of the same. Like don't get me wrong, that's great, but like, I don't know. For a Far Cry game to be like really, really good, I really want a whole new, unique, you know, setting. 
And with this one, the setting is already going to be on lock. I'm already pretty much set to buy this, hopefully on day one. But February is when it's coming out. Next up, Destiny DLC is already coming out in, was it December? Destiny 2, to be exact. And I don't really care. I'm not saying Destiny 2 is a bad game. Fuck no. It, it's a great game. But, you know, I've only played the beta, and, you know, it's, it's, it's fun and everything. But I, I just, I'm going to wait until, like, a Game of the Year edition or something. So, like, right now, I'm not too hyped up for it. Monster Hunter Worlds, though, you, first off, you, they have a bonus feature where you can actually play as Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn in the game on the PS4 version. And the beta's coming up. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, again, I'm a pseudo fan. I've only played a little bit of the game, but I'm already in love with the series. It's weird. Um, mostly from, like, you know, from my friends telling me about it. God of War, uh, God of War, hold on, not yet. Gotta, don't jump on the list. Call of Duty World War II. Hmm. Um, in this case, it looks cool, but again, I'm just over Call of Duty. I mean, it looks like a, the graphics make it look amazing, but I'd rather just play Call of Duty 2, because I am just done with the series. Um, oh yeah, the, what is it? The Cunnington, what the hell? Carnantan bonus map. When you buy the season, it's not a bonus if I have to pay for it, asshole. Uh, next up, Battlefront 2 gameplay. That's all I'm gonna say. It looks cool, but you know, still kind of wishy washy on buying it yet. Or still, Spider Man, more, more Spider Man gameplay. Now, here where's where it gets interesting because all we saw was Spider Man. You could play as Spider Man. We're finally get, getting to see we could play as actual Peter Parker now. Where that may be, you know, kind of uninteresting to some people, it does set up a great story. And were this game already had the gameplay unlocked, at least from what we saw, I would have liked a good story. And this is already shaping up to be freaking fantastic. I mean, you know, some hints like Osborne running for mayor, um, Miles. God damn it. If Miles is not a, a playable character, I'm going to be pissed. But it seems like they're setting it up. But regardless, it just looks great. I cannot wait. And the fact that there's going to be a what it looks like to be a good story, I'm already set. Detroit Become Human. I've always been wishy-washy. From the moment they announced it, it looked cool. And then I started, like, not caring. But this time they showed us a brand new storyline. So it's showing that there's going to be multiple stories in this overall game. It's, you know, choose your own adventure. I don't know if it's going to be using PlayLink, but if it does, that'd be great. Um, But yeah, from the storyline that they showed in the trailer, it hooked me back in because that was a strong storyline. That, it really made me hate the villain. Just watch it for yourself. It, it was fantastic. Um, Next up, God of War gameplay. It's more of it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you know, it, it, this game can just can't. This game just can't come soon enough because it looks fantastic. The combat just looks even more polished than before. It, I'm just gonna stop right there. It, it, it's the same thing, but with more. It's like we get it. Just give us the goddamn game. You're already hyping us up too much. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, the Frozen Wild DLC footage. Obviously, you know it's gonna be coming out, or this is coming out soon. But the final thing that I feel like I'll, I'll add that to the end actually I'm not gonna talk about because there's a there's a segment at the end where I'm gonna talk about the big ones yeah uh -huh. excuse me I'm just editing. oh we're gonna move on moving on to now this one's a smaller one because these are the, the announced sequels these are sequels to games that were whatever it, I was I was a weird way how I formatted it but guacamole 2 guacamole is a fun co-op beat-em-up game not only just because oh yeah mexican is why i'm like it. no if anything it makes fun of like mexican culture and i love it because it's like so tongue-in-cheek like poking fun at it i just love every single bit of it it's so the gameplay style is fantastic the art style is beautiful everything about that game is great and they're adding more stuff to it like you can actually you know attack at the chicken more you know dodge move more more I mean, attack moves it just looks great and i cannot wait to play this with my friends because the first one is a blast um, Spelunky 2. I've played this game before. I'm not a huge fan of it in the sense that, like, you know, I, I wasn't my cup of tea. Again, I'm going to say that phrase again. But that doesn't take away from the game. If you love Spelunky 1, this looks like it's going to be just fantastic. And also the story, how, like how it's the son of the first character, is just so cool. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I just, I just really like that. Um, next up, the new announcements. And these are the ones that were the new announcement IPs. Like, these are brand new. And like I say, uh, I, maybe some of these have been announced beforehand. But these are definitely ones that were all brand new to me. So, first things first. The Hong Kong Massacre. 
it's a top-down like Hotline Miami style game, but with like a Blade Runner or like Tokyo kind of vibe, like you know, art style, like neo noir definitely. But it's like a John Woo game, as in it has bullet time, and you're definitely a freaking like police detective going to like to the you know the gritty underbelly of the city and just taking down like you know uh, the the crime syndicates. It looks freaking fantastic, and holy shit! Like I'm actually excited for this game. Like um, most of these games, you know, you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm interested. But this one, like this is an indie title that actually hooked me from the beginning. Like I'm already, I'm, I'm already 100% a. Like that, this, this is gonna look like a great game. Um, next up, a small little time puzzle game. Not really that interested in. Uh, it's called The Gardens Between. It looks cool and everything, but again, not my cup of tea. Um, I don't know. It, it, it looks fine. If, if this is your type of thing, it definitely looks cool, but not for me. Sorry. Uh, next up, Megalith. Now this is a VR, now I'm gonna start talking more about VR games. Megalith. Megalith is a god simulator monster shooter. It's it's first person view and you get to play as a monster and I guess, shooter, I don't know, I don't think you're actually picking up guns and stuff, but I feel like you're gonna be able like to launch stuff out of your hands, like, you know, like like magical spells or like, you know, like bodily fluids, I don't know. It. We got nothing out of it. All, all we got was like a small little teaser trailer and there's just a little bit of a gameplay showing like, oh, you can see your hands, it's like this monster. It looks cool and everything, but honest to God, I want to see more. Like right now, I can't really give you a, an honest assessment of it. Um, next up, Bow to Blood. Now this seems to be the answer to uh, Sea of Thieves. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Sea of Thieves on the Xbox One. Is it? I don't, I don't remember the actual name of the, uh, that game, but regardless, it, so I think that's, I think that's what it is. Um, it's a like Star Trek bridge crew where you're you're part of a ship crew, but like a space pirate crew. And uh, Star, uh, Skies of Arcadia fans out there, this looks about as close as you're going to get to a VR experience with Skies of Arcadia. It looks great, but again, I just need a lot more. Um, next up, let's go with um, Ultra Wings, a plain VR simulator, but with kind of an arcade vibe. It looks kind of like Pilot Wings in a sense, um, but you're just flying planes and like little mini helicopters and stuff. And from what it sounds like, from what we were told, it's gonna have like 30 hours of gameplay, you know, if you want like, like gold, metal, everything. That's great. I mean, the more, the merrier. And it just looks fun. I mean, I wasn't even in VR watching it. And like the moment when he was trying to land or when the, uh, the player was trying to land the, the mini helicopter, mini plane, whatever the hell it was, it was kind of nerve wracking. I was like, oh crap. Like, like that, that's the kind of vibe I want to get. Like I was like, oh shit, is this gonna go bad? Like, and they land, I'm like, okay. Sm small little thing. I really liked it. And I'm already hooked. Um, next up after that, uh, Jesus Christ, this one is a. I've been dying for another inline like rollerblading game, kind of like Jet Set Radio. Sadly, it's not like Jet Set Radio, but it is an inline game. It's fast paced and it's called Sprint Vector, and it's an inline racer. Yes, a rollerblading racing game in VR. It looks fantastic, just to say the least, because it looks action packed. It looks fast paced, and honest to God. I'm buying this day one. It looks that great. Hopefully it's not gonna cost me an arm and a leg, but from what it looks like, it's gonna be, you know, a pretty simple indie title. I'm hoping that it has more meat to it, but from just from the gameplay, I'm already set. That the, the art style looks cool, but the gameplay is what really hooked me here. Um, next up, blah, 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 blah. This, actually, there's another one. This is coming out tomorrow, actually, shit. Uh, at least from the time this video's coming out. Uh, Stifled VR. This is a horror sound game. And it, this is already announced prior. But I'm putting in the new announcements IPs because even though it wasn't announced prior, like right now, I'm like, you know, just remembering it. Stifled is a sound-based horror game, as in the sense that you could actually use the microphone in the actual headset itself, which finally, uh, so, I mean, some games have used it before, but this one definitely is using it like a, an actual gameplay element. Um, but yeah, you make noises or you use like the environment around you to make noises because everything around you is pitch black. But through the echolocation or like this cool like a wireframe style, whenever you make sound, it like gives you a nice like glimpse of what's around you. But don't make too much sound because there's always, I mean, there's creatures out there that are going to kill you. So it's definitely a strategy horror game. I freaking love it. Um, and like uh, stealth, add stealth in there. Um, League of War VR Arena. I'm not a huge uh, fan of RTS or tower based games, but I've been known to play them. But this one is a VR RTS tower multiplayer game. It's in the sense of like you you and another player stand over this huge arena and you get to just command armies. That's pretty awesome. 
I, I might not buy it day one, but I definitely want to play this. It looks, it looks really interesting. Again, not a huge fan of the like those kind of genres, but here it really hooked me in because I, I just like that idea that you know it's like kind of like a foosball table where you get to like do this stuff. It, I feel like it's like maybe it's like a Star Wars thing where you know like they were playing like a holographic chess. Like I don't know, maybe just, it could just be that, but it looks really really cool. Sorry, just, uh, just uh, blabbing on right here. Uh, another one. Uh, this one is not a VR game. No, we're done with VR games for a little bit. Actually, no, we're gonna be talking about it very soon. Uh, War. O U R E. It's a dragon uh, game. It's an indie game. It looks kind of cool, uh, but I definitely want to see more. Right now, all we got was like a, just a small little, you know, teaser trailer. Uh, on top of that, another PlayLink game is coming out, and this one, whereas I already uh, reviewed Hidden Agenda, that one was like you know an interactive movie. This is literally an interactive movie. Like this, this is not CGI. This is live action, which is cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I definitely want more games of this style. It looks definitely cool. They definitely shouldn't cost like a. Like the same price as a normal video game but it definitely looks like it has like a lot of uh you know effort put into it so i'm actually excited but yeah it's using the playlink thing and i can't wait to play this with friends next up apex a sorry apex apex construct vr it's a shooter in like a gravity uh what do you call that game gravity rush type of world where everything's all jumbled up and screwed up it's it looks cool but again you need to see more uh, gameplay from Transference, the game that was teased back at E3, that I think is being uh, produced by Elijah Wood, and I, I, think, like, I think that's right. I'm not entirely sure, but regardless, it looks really, really cool. All, but the fact is, we got a, just a tease of it, because back then all we got was like a little, you know, a live action like teaser. Here we actually get to see gameplay. It looks cool, but again, it's just so quick. It's like ten seconds and it's gone. It was like part of like the the, the montage, and like God damn, I want to hear more of it. But uh, yeah, next up, Eden Tomorrow, a game I don't really know much about. It's a base in space, and you're playing as a scientist, I think. It definitely gives me that vibe. It's going to be like Farpoint, because Farpoint was kind of the same thing. It's like it's a VR experience. I just don't know much about this. I don't even know if it's a first-person game. I don't, even, I don't really know anything. So definitely wait to see more. But yeah, with all that said and done, let's get down to the big announcements. And these are the ones that pretty much blew everyone away, at least for me. Um, that's a jet outside. Uh, but yeah, first up, this is a remaster, so nothing new here. But my god, the graphics look incredible. This this game is my favorite PS2 game of all time. Shadow of the Colossus, gonna throw it out there. But god damn it, like a huge part of that game was the art style. It looked, it was just beautiful, and everything was just so massive. I loved every single bit of it. And it starts off in the woods in the trailer. And yeah, they remastered this. This is not like an HD, you know like uh, or you know this is i think it's like a remake more whatever the graphics look incredible if that was if they just up the ps2 graphics holy shit i didn't even know how great that game looked but i'm pretty sure they did some work to the graphics and it just looks absolutely fan freaking tastic i mean it it was gorgeous i was on the fence of buying it again because i already own it for the ps3 um i don't own the ps2 version sadly but you know the ps3 version is more than enough but i'm buying the new one that that, that was incredible that was too much too much good stuff, AM, PM. But regardless, uh, moving on. Uh, last VR game I want to talk about, Blood and Truth. This was definitely the showstopper for me, at least, at least in VR uh, instances. This is like a like a saboteur game. It's like you're like ex Green Beret. You're like a, a in, you're an assassin or you're a saboteur. You're an infiltrator. You're but it was just just espionage, just an over. Like an overdrive of just awesome espionage, like 60s vibe. And it looked freaking great. Everything everything about it was just amazing. In the sense that, just style-wise. Gameplay looks you know, pretty stock, pretty standard for like a VR game. But when the actual, you know, immersiveness is pretty much picked up by the style itself, like that's, I mean, I would definitely love to be in like an espionage saboteur like in that era because it looks freaking great. So I'm already stoked for it. I just want to see more. But still, from what we, they, like they gave us a full-length trailer, it looked great. Um, another thing, uh, on Rush by Codemasters, the guys who make Dirt Rally and, you know, Dirt 4, like, you know, all those Colin McRae games, um, this is essentially the game, I don't know whether this is the old one that I was hearing about, the Criterion game, where it was, like, you know, multiple ways to actually enjoy the game, you could, you know, do ATV riding and drive cars, you can, like, fly planes, it's, like, a huge, extreme, like, open world, like, you know, autom automobile game, um, I don't know if it's the same game, but it definitely looks like it. 
you could fly planes, you could, you know, do ATVs, you can drive cars in this huge open world. It looks fan freaking amazing. I gotta stop saying fantastic. I probably said amazing too, so many goddamn times. There's not many, there's not enough words that in my mind. I gotta use a thesaurus, I'm sorry, but it just looks freaking great. It just looks like just non-stop arcade fun. And in, all oh right, start, sorry, I keep trying to say that. Did I say that it was in VR? It's not in VR. But with Codemasters, that might change. I mean, they did put Dirt Rally in VR, and they're going to probably put Dirt 4 in VR, you know, if the interest is there. But this one, make this one in VR, because that would be amazing. Just seriously, holy shit. If this game was in VR, it would be a day one buy. Right now, it already looks like it's going to be a definitely buy from me. Maybe I'll wait till like a, a, a drop in sale, but it doesn't matter. This game is interesting. It's already hooked me, and I'm already in. Ooh, here's new... Uh, okay, so here's one thing. Everyone was talking about Sucker Punch for the longest time, saying, when the hell are you guys going to make a new game? You know, it's been like a, a couple of years. We get it. You know, you're, you're working on something, but like we haven't heard a freaking thing. When we finally heard it, when this came, when this was, you know, revealed, I thought, is this Tenshu? Is this Onimusha? What the hell is this? Nope, brand new IP. It's called Ghost of Tsushima, and damn, does it look fantastic. I mean, it has the whole samurai vibe down, and it just looks awesome. And finally... The piece of resistance, the big showstopper. They were kind of hinting at, you know, Final Fantasy news coming up. And then they revealed the Final Fantasy XV, you know, uh, DLC stuff, which is fine. So, sadly, we're not getting Final Fantasy VII news. But we did get a whole new trailer for The Last of Us Part Two, And the way they unveiled it was freaking incredible. I mean, from the beginning. I didn't, It wasn't until the very end of the actual trailer that you know what the hell it is. Because... Uh, what got me in the beginning, and I thought, oh, this is Last of Us 100%, was the sound effects and, like, the actual, you know, graphics, like, the graphic capabilities, like, and the actual, like, style, the tone was there. But the whole time I was like, is it or isn't it? Because these are brand new characters. We're seeing brand new characters, which may piss off some people, but this is what I kind of wanted. Ellie's story is done, or I guess not anymore because we just saw the trailer, which I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm still excited to see what the happens to her, but the fact that we get to follow brand new characters is even better because it actually leaves open the question like how many characters are we going to follow like these people don't really seem like anything like have anything to do with ellie at all i mean maybe they're you know, her friends or everything or something but it does look pretty cool in the sense that we're getting a whole brand new story and, and that's all we need like the lore is there we easily have room for brand new characters and also like the i kind of got like a, like a tribes like people vibe in the sense like you know they have like their own like a uh, like stories of like like the four time like this kid saying there's demons coming you know the clickers but they're calling them demons like they've already like made up their whole lore like they've become like ancient beings now it's been what uh 20 years but then like added on another what, five or ten years on i'd say five years ellie doesn't look that much older but yeah 25 years kids growing up in this world they're definitely gonna be having like their own like folklore their own kind of stories but it looks freaking incredible. Watch it for yourself. I did not see that coming. It looks freaking <sighs> spellbinding. There we go. I'll, I'll go with a brand new word. Spellbinding. Uh, it was the tits. It looked fantastic. Let's use it again. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, this overall whole thing was pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm hoping people would, like if you watch the full like live show. Thank you for watching this video. That's awesome. But. It was kind of a weird thing where, like, they announced, like, a shit ton of games in the beginning. Like, the first hour was, like, you know, like, the, the pre-showcase. But they announced so many games prior to that. And I thought that was the showcase. I'm like, okay. But there's a countdown timer going, like, okay, so once that ends, what the, oh, we're going to have a whole other media showcase. How many more games do you guys are going to announce? And that's what, that's what got me. Like, they said 21 games we're going to talk about and seven brand new ones. No. At least from what I saw. I saw at least 15 or 20 brand new IPs. Granted, these are some IPs that, you know, I may have not heard about. But the fact that we're actually getting, like, you know, full-on, like, brand new footage and, like, full gameplay, it looks great. But, yeah, I think my my, my camera's going to die on me soon. But, yeah, regardless, what did you guys think? I am excited. That was E3 Part 2. E3 this year was, you know, great. I loved it. But it definitely felt, left me feeling wanting more. You know, they did give us great announcements, but... They could have given us more. That's just me being greedy, too. I'm being a greedy fuck. But with this, it shows why I'm being greedy. Because they are just pumping out so much good content. So many great things. I'm sorry. Uh, but that's it.
um, overall good good uh, showcase. Everything was quick, you know, not non-stop games. There was literally nobody that came up to talk about. Obviously, the moderator did, but like, there was nobody like, oh yeah, today we're gonna be talking about the game and blah 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 blah. No, no, it was just gameplay, 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 gameplay. A uh, little bit of an inner monologue. You come out. Today we're gonna talk about PlayStation VR arms. Gameplay, gameplay, game. It, that was fan fucking tastic. But yeah, regardless, what do you guys think? Please tell me in the comments. I want to banter. But yeah, that's the video. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. <sighs> and I'll see you guys later.